Hi everyone. Uh, please welcome Roman. 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 Sorry, uh, Roman. Uh, on his presentation about uh, Bonobo and uh, uh, simplifying data pipelines. Guten Tag, everybody. Um, so yes, we are going to talk today about uh, Bonobo, which is a um, kind of young li library for Python 3.5 and the next version to do ETL uh, using the simplest data structures you already know uh, to do that. Um, the plan for today is to make a quick introduction on ETLs. Uh, probably some of you are already very familiar with that or less so. I try to get someone, uh, everybody on the same page. Uh, then, really quick, jump into the, the the simplest thing about Bonobo, and most importantly, uh, demonstrate a real-world application uh, using Django, using a simple web app, and using some uh, data imports. Um, I have two challenges today. Uh, first is the time, because uh, I have a shorter presentation than expected, so I will really go. Maybe too quick sometimes, I'm very sorry about that. And the second one is that I just downloaded everything I needed from the network and added HTTP cache uh, to the presentation this morning, so I expect everything will work because the Wi-Fi is kind of slow. Um, so, who in the room is not at all familiar with ETLs? Okay, uh, very few, but I will, so I, I will explain a bit uh, what it is. The concept, I, I guess everybody has seen the presentation of Dask this morning, the concept is quite different. Instead of applying uh, graphs uh, into a full computation, the concept is to apply graphs on independent rows of data. So for example, in this simplest conceptual example, uh, we are going to take a data set which is food and barred and bars, and for each line, apply a graph of transformation one after the other. As the data lines are independent, we can extract foo, then the result of extracting foo will go to transform, and while it's transforming the, the result of extracting foo, uh, extract can handle bar. So each node in the graph will, will be called once per line, and each, transform, uh, each line transformation is completely independent. Of course, in the real world, it's much more complicated. We have databases, we have HTTP web services, we have emails, we have logging, we have anything, so the graph is more looking like this in, uh, in, in real-world application, but the concept is the same. Every time something is finished, it's independent, the next can process it, and we can parallelize all that. Uh, there is a lot of tools, uh, mostly in the Java world, that does this graphically. It can be a hell to maintain, um, but yeah, uh, when I started to use it, to use those kind of tools, I was saying to myself, but why don't we have a simple Python tool to do the same thing using code because we are coders? And yeah, I'm getting a bit ahead uh, of the slide. So I wanted to have an ETL framework uh, using code as configuration, Python code, uh, to use the engineering practice um, we, we are all used to, unit tests, inheritance, and important also, I wanted it to focus on uh, small scale because I want to install it in my laptop and start working with data just in minutes and deploy to server really easily. So if you have terabytes of data, that's probably not the right tool. That's definitely not the right tool. If you have less than a terabyte of data, uh, maybe it's something that you can uh, look into. So that's Bonobo. Uh, it's a framework to, work, to write ETL jobs in Python uh, using the same concept I, I showed in legacy ETLs. And it's not data analysis, it's not big data, it's not um, scheduler. Um, what, that, that's great because the presentation this morning about Dask presented all those tools, but it's not trying to compete with Pandas, it's not the same thing, it's not trying to compete with Airflow, it's not the same thing, but all those tools can work together. Uh, so that's really great to have all that. That's for the introduction. So, um, so jumping in, uh, jumping in into Bonobo is quite simple. Uh, you need to pip install it. I, I won't show the example here because I, I will show it with the um, Django example later. But you, you can just pip install it. There is very few dependencies. You can um, create a project using uh, Cookie Cutter. The underlying library uses Cookie Cutter, but it's just bootstrap a, a very small project, and you can run it right away. 
and you will see in the console all the statistics of your graph. So if here we had conceptually three um, nodes in the graph, extract, transform, and load, you will see the input, the outputs, the number of errors of each node, etc. That's for the jump in. Um, the theory and, con and mostly concepts uh, we used here is graphs. Uh, it's a simple list of nodes and edges. Uh, you can create all kind of graphs as long as it's acyclic. Um, managing cycles is maybe possible in the future, but it's kind of complex because it's, it can bring a lot of problems. But you can create all other kinds of graphs using simple data structures uh, like Python rule data structures. And the nodes or transformations are basically anything. So you can have functions when you have one row of input that match one row of outputs. You can have generators if you have any numbers of outputs for um, one for each input. You can have iterators if you don't have input at all but you want to yield things. Uh, you can use anything that is scalable. Uh, like here we are using a class with a call dunder uh, and just yield stuff. It's Anything callable in, Pyth in Python uh, can be used as nodes in the graph. Now, the, I, I run really quick into all this because I want to show uh, real code. Um, now the, the, the real big part of this presentation will be to build a Django application. Um, that is a music directory, so we'll find some, some data sets of um, music groups and music genres. Uh, and we'll import that into a Django um, application, show that on the website, and yeah, just to demonstrate how it can be applied really quickly to, to real world. So five steps. Uh, first, we'll use Django 2 because it's great. Django says, uh, okay, from the, uh, the, the two major version, we don't support uh, Python 2 anymore. That's great because Bonobo is a Python 3 library only, so we'll use the alpha of, uh, of Django. So. Is that, no, it, that's not big enough at all, I guess. Oh, what did I do? Can everybody read that in the back? Yes, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I still need some space in the screen, but that's, that should be good. Okay, so, um, Okay, we have an application here, so I bootstrapped it for you. Uh, and just to know that I'm not cheating at all, I will drop database and create it again. So now I have an empty PostgreSQL database. Um, here I have a bunch of files, but mostly, let's say it's a raw Django application with just one management command I bootstrapped. And I will show this management command because, um, so if you're not familiar with, is someone, someone not familiar with Django? Okay, management commands are just um, console scripts. You can just use uh, the Django management. Oh. That is manage.py, which is a CLA of Django, and you can just add commands to that, and a management command is just a way to do that in Django. So uh, here, uh, I didn't use the, the native uh, Django base command uh, class as a ba base, but ETL command, which just add a few more things. And this ETL command can just uh, yield a bonobo graph from, like return a bonobo graph from a, from a method get graph. And I will be able, just before I, I say uh, what's happening here, I can just run import dbpedia, which is the name of the management command. And it will, run, it will, it will get the graph, run bonobo on it, and show the, the output and the statistics. So let's see, here we uh, built a graph. Um, so it's a bonobo.graph instance. It's just saying, okay, use self.extract, send the output of self.extract to, to self.transform, uh, and send the output of self.transform to self.load. Uh, and that's done line by line. So extract will be called once, but transform will be called uh, three times, one, once on A, once on B, once on C, et cetera. So, that's not really interesting. We're just uppercasing A, B, and C. But that's to show what uh, ETL command does. It just uh, takes the get graph, calls it, get the graph instance, and throw it to Bonobo to execute that. Now, let's uh, move forward. Uh, uh, 
So of, of course I could have run also the manage.py uh, run server, which, uh, so yeah, I have an applied migration because I have an, a new thing, but yeah, we have the hello world from Django. Uh, I guess they redesigned it for Django too, that's nice. So, okay, step two. Um, okay, new concept uh, also. Uh, step two is we are going to talk with DBpedia, which is a semantic version of Wikipedia using something called SparkQL. So just really quick so you know what all this is. Um, it used triplets to describe basically anything. And triplets are um, a subject, a predicate, an object. So for example, um, I don't know, I can say um, this room, uh, which is the subject, uh, predicate would be color and the um, object would be blue. So we can store information, key attribute uh, information about anything in as triplets. And DBpedia is just Wikipedia uh, passed and stored as a huge triplet store. So um, there, are, there are crazy guys that just try to extract anything they could from Wikipedia in all languages and store any, any information they could uh, structure into triplets. Uh, and then we have a third tool, which is SparkQL, which is a query language that, can, uh, that enables us to run arbitrary queries on that. And as objects can be also subjects of other triples, we can follow the relation, and basically it's a graph, relation, uh, it's a graph database, and we can have really complex queries uh, about what's contained in that. So we can use Wikipedia as a computer. I hope this is uh, a good enough intro uh, for what we're going to do. So for our, mu our music um, directory, we will try to extract music groups from DBpedia. Um, so, no, sorry, I forgot just something. Uh, is I, I will just show you the transformation, how it changed now. Uh, so I removed all the ABC stuff, and uh, now we are going to extract generous uh, from Wikipedia, musical generous, and just write it again on STD out. So we are using uh, something called um, uh, I forgot uh, SparkQL wrapper to make the SparkQL queries. And I have a really small class that just build SparkQL queries uh, a bit differently. And, and so here, yes, we are going to, uh, so, sorry, I have one concept I need to introduce um, before that. There is another um, method from ETL command that is get services, which define uh, implementation of services we can use at runtime uh, from the ETL. Um, all ETLs usually allows you to define database connection, etc. and here we're using this to define what client we'll use from, uh, for DBpedia. Uh, so here we connect to the German DBpedia, but we could connect to any language DBpedia using the same interface, and the transformation here just says, okay, I will use the service name DBpedia, and it will uh, get it injected to the call. So we don't depend to a specific implementation, we just depend to whatever we will have at runtime. And so this build the SparkQL query, applies it to this, and there is a shortcut here that says, okay, you, you will go, you're going to yield the genre and the count uh, expect, uh, from, the, from this query. So I guess this won't work because uh, it doesn't use the HTTP cache, or probably the Wi-Fi got, the wi -Fi got better. So. Uh, so here it extracted um, subjects and amount of resources linked to the subject. Uh, here, for example, we have the Bruce uh, subject, which is a music genre in DBpedia, and we have 284 uh, objects, uh, yeah, objects associated of type music uh, groups. Okay, uh, just to show we can, so if the Wi-Fi work, of course, I can just switch to FRDBpedia, and I will have different resources, so they, they store um, uh, they, they saw all the different Wikipedia as different data stores, so probably there can be links between them because they have unique URLs to identify in uh, each, um, each resource. But yeah, they're completely independent, so they don't depend on having the same name in each GBpedia, et cetera. Let's get back to the German one. 
So, um, okay. Let's move on. Um, music groups. So, for now, we just got the genres from DBpedia, and the way we are going to get the music groups and is to find all objects that are of kind music group and also have a genre linked because we are going to try to have an application that shows all genres, all, all groups, and uh, allows to navigate uh, from one to another. So, um, let's see what changed. So here we have a more complex chain. It's still a linear graph. We will have a non-linear graph uh, in the next step. But here we're just still extracting genres. Uh, probably we don't get the count anymore. We are going to join uh, to music groups, uh, I will show in a minute. Uh, then we are going to remove the duplicates because some groups have more than one genre. Uh, so we are going to uh, get from, t from tuples group to genre to group to a set of all the genres. Um, then we are going to query again with uh, DBpedia to get all the attributes of this group, probably not all, mostly title and description. And we are going to update the Django database, which Remind me that probably I should run the migration. Uh, yes. So uh, let's see. So the steps. Extract genres is exactly the same. We just remove the count. Join music group is running another query uh, and will yield the genre and the subject. Subject being the URL of the music group. Then we have a group by music group. I won't get into detail, but basically it's what I said. It's just uh, grouping and transforming uh, A, B, A, C to A set of B, C. Um, then we are going to get the attributes here again. Uh, we're just uh, using title and description, and we yield all that. And then we are just using a create or update method that just updates a row in Django database. For the Django part, uh, we have a simple model that just defines a subject, a title, a slug, a description. And this is the base class both for music genre and music group. Uh, probably we have a URL that is just a map from the HTTP path to what's the handler in Django. And we have views, and we are using some class of Django, which is a list view and a detail view, just to show a list of all music groups um, in database and paginated, and a detail view that just sh shows one resource. So let's run the thing, um, which should be fast because we have the HTTP cache. Okay, so here we are. It's a bit, bit longer. Uh, we're seeing it to, we are extracting genres still. We join, uh, so we have 13,000 uh, items. Uh, then we group by, and there is 4,000 that was duplicate, so it, it not remove that, but group them. And then it gets the attributes, 9,000, and then it updates the database. Usually in ETLs, databases are always the slowest part. Uh, network resources in databases are always the slowest part, but and it's still true with Vulnerable. So uh, let's manage run server. And yes, now we have a few. I don't show the template, but it's quite simple. And now we have a list of the groups uh, that we found in the database. So we can navigate, we can go to anything, and we have a German description that I, can, I can't understand, but um, that's coming directly from DBpedia. Oops, uh, that's cute. Okay, next step is to do the exact same thing with genres. Um, that's not really different, so I will hit rebase continue. It seems to work. So, um, our task to get to go to the get graph method again is a bit different. We kept the same chain we created in the previous step, but now we add a new chain, 
which says, okay, you will add a, a graph chain from extract generous, which was defined here, not, not defined, but what's already used here, and you'll add another branch, you'll add another branch, which uh, will use get general attributes, and create or update music general. So it's basically the same we did with music groups, but just to show, uh, here we already had the URL from music general, uh, here we use Wikipedia, we query uh, about this subject, says, okay, give me everything in German about uh, this uh, subject. Then we get title, description, and we have a creator of that music genre, which does the same as the creator of that music group. If we run that, no, sorry. If we run that, it will does the same, but now we, s we see that the last two already finished because even if there is a linear display in the terminal, uh, it's a graph, so uh, they don't have any, in, uh, any input anymore because the, f the previous transformation, which is extract generous, is um, already finished. So, uh, yeah, so it just ran in parallel and without you to worry about that. So let's run server. Of course, I added also the templates for the new pages we will have. Uh, so. We still have groups, and now we have a generous also. You will notice that um, probably there is not only music generous here, but we'll um, solve this problem in the last and next step. Uh, but now I can go to alternative metal and have the description. Uh, I can, um, can still go to groups. So let's jump to the last step. Now we change only one thing in the graph, which is the create or update music group. Well, first we updated the model to add um, many-to-many -many relation between group and genre. So I will run the migrations because there is new things in the database. And, and yeah, here we just use a naive way. Probably there is more efficient way and it's very slow to do it like this, but we are, doing, uh, we are going to add the many-to-many -many relationship by just getting the object every time and just adding the link um, I, uh, genre ID to group ID. And that's the only change uh, we have here. Uh, so let's import dbpedia. It should be a bit longer because it's not efficient at all, but that's not really important. Uh, it will just create all the links, so uh, of course I should have uh, plenty of things to say while it's running, I don't really have that. But yeah, let's let it run. Uh, I can, yeah, I can show just something, I can show that the views in Django, for those familiar with Django, I'm sorry, I can dive too much into that for the others, but uh, we're just still using uh, list view, and uh, to list view and to detail view, and I changed a bit the query set to use uh, something from Krogs that will use to use the same uh, list view in the main list view, but also in detail views to have linked object uh, uh, lists shown in the detail views of other objects. That's probably a bit uh, cryptic what I just said, but I will show in the uh, in the web browser just after. So yeah, that's finished. So I run server. And now, for example, in the index, I'm using two uh, sub-list views that uh, is just the same list view as we use in the other page. For those who use Django, they will probably understand. Um, here, we don't have any more uh, the Abante world that we had before because it's not a music genre and there's no music group linked. But we can go to blues, and blues now have a list of the groups from blues with the pagination working too, so I can go to anything. I don't know all those groups. Uh, but for example, Rare Health now have, has uh, also the list of genres, so I can navigate from blues to jazz, and yeah, that just works like this. Okay. Uh, that's the end of the demo. Of course, we can discuss more all the, the, the details I just skipped here after. But yeah, just to conclude, uh, it's, um, it's a pretty young project. It's less than one year old, so uh, yeah, expect it to be young. Probably if you have really serious thing and critical mission critical things, you should not yet use it. But uh, you can already, it's, it's pretty stable, you can uh, already uh, use it on some proof of concept, something, and it's really quick to jump in, and it's really just Python. Uh, I'm 
I need to really thank all the contributors that already jumped in the project because I didn't expect that, so it's a really big, big thank to, to them. Uh, I hope there will be plenty more, of course, but uh, yeah, thank you all. Um, all uh, also, I, I want to say again, if you're looking for a big data tool, probably that's not at all what you're looking for, and it will never become that. The, the real goal is to be able to wrangle small data uh, in one minute from, ins from uh, nothing to installed and running. Uh, if you're familiar with lean manufacturing, it's a bit a lean manufacturing chain where, where each row of data is the, the, the thing you're working on, and the goal is really to work one packet of data at a time, uh, one step at a time. You can read the documentation. There is, we are trying to build the, the website and the documentation and, and put all information here. Some things are lacking, uh, some things are still lacking but uh, it's getting more and more complete. You can follow uh, the announcement of the release on, uh, on Twitter uh, with this uh, account. And yeah, uh, by the way, I'm Romain Dorgueil. I started this project one year ago. Um, it's not by any way my project. It's the project of all people joining the, the thing. You can also follow me if you, if you wish. Uh, I'm currently a startup advisor in two accelerator programs, so I'm advising founders. Um, about technical stuff and less technical stuff. We, uh, we advise and we, uh, we had the joy to have with us uh, 50 companies already and, and counting. And just before we end, uh, I'm probably going to organize a sprint, a sprint on Saturday. So feel free to jump in. It's a great place to learn the basics, just discuss things, discuss concepts. Uh, of course, I'm always available in the conference too to have any discussion and uh, any critics are very good for me. Uh, I have stickers uh, somewhere, uh, so I've, at the end of the conf just a few minutes before you go to it, just grab a sticker and, and stick it everywhere, not on the walls of the conference, but stick it anywhere where it's legit. And I really need feedback, so if uh, you please, uh, that would be great if you can uh, just go to this URL, or this URL is the same, uh, and just fill in what you think about the project, about the presentation, that really helps me to, to get better and to, to improve the project. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. And yeah, I'm available for questions if we have still a bit of time. He says yes. There is still time for some questions. I have a question. Um, so, how uh, you, you you showed the gra um, you were doing genres, uh, you were joining genres with um, uh, with, groups. with with the groups. Yes. Uh, how do you make sure that your that that join only happens when the genres have been imported? Do you have a dependency there? So no, uh, there is no dependency management in Wonderbo. That's the main difference with, with things like Airflow, which is more um, uh, focused on dependency management. And I'm looking forward to integrate uh, Bonobo with Django because it's, uh, it will be great to have between different ETL jobs uh, the management of workflow. But here, the, the trick I use to manage that is that as I'm creating or updating genres every time. I don't need to wait to wait for it uh, to be ready because the database will just handle the transaction. So if it has been created by the branch uh, that gets the title and the description, then it's available and the other will get the same object. If it's created by the other one, there won't be any title or description, but the subject will still be here. And then the first branch will, will be able to, to update that. But no, there is no... Um, uh, life cycle or management, it's just as soon as the data is ready, pass it to the next one. We have a, f a few plans to add simple case for that, but uh, it's not the main focus. It's, it's mostly focused on one task only. Everybody is angry, but don't be shy. <laughs> Can you say something about overhead uh, from Bonobo compared to maybe Luigi, Airflow, and so on? Uh, does, your, does your solution uh, 
produce less overhead on the data processing than, than say, a workflow management solution? Okay. Um, so yes, there is uh, overhead. Mostly there is an overhead that comes from the communication between the different calls and from building threads. For now, uh, I couldn't dive in that, but all the parallel, uh, the parallel processing is done using threads, so each transformation is run as fast as possible, as many times as possible, in independent and different threads. That has a cost. Um, mostly, this overhead is not important if uh, you're relying on, let me rephrase that. Um, most of the time, ETL tasks are using databases, are using um, external web services, are using external services which are by definition slow, and even if they are not slow, the network is slow. So we are more focusing on uh, making sure that we can uh, use incremental results from database, from web service, to uh, pass it as fast as we can to the next step of the processing, uh, done on this kind of optimization on the overhead. Uh, I didn't measure it, so I can't really say how much it is, but if you are, like here, using a, an external web service, uh, web service sorry, uh, it, for sure, the web service will have a lot more, like the network will have a lot more of overhead than uh, Bonobo. Uh, of course, we'll look into optimization at some point, and mostly for web service, for, for web service. Uh, I plan to have something that can say, okay, I'm not interested in uh, the FIFO property, the first in, first out property of this exact node. So uh, you can probably run four at a time, and there is a timeout. So for now, we have really a, a strict constraint on each node. We say, okay, it's first in, first out, just one at a time in a node. And, and yeah, and it has all, uh, as much time as it wants to, to run. But you can. Pretty soon, you will be able to add properties to say, okay, this node, the FIFO property is not important, so just run five at a time and in whatever order you want. So, for example, querying 10,000 queries or uh, 100,000 queries to GBpedia could be done any order, and the first uh, that gets the results uh, yield to the next one. So, probably this kind of optimization is more important than the overhead for now. Does that answer your question? If there are no more questions, I want to thank uh, the speaker and uh, time for lunch. Thank you. Um, and if you want stickers, just uh, run fast here and I will give you some. <laughs>